Okay. Show me. Hi there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the Dutch Sea Channel. Thank you very much for tuning in again. And what do we have today? It is the Rodeo 110 from Valkyra. Yes, sir. A fun little quadcopter. I did a uh, initial review on it uh, the other day, and um, one of the really weird, weird, well, weird things of this quadcopter is its firmware. It uh, has a beta flight firmware, but a uh, proprietary, so uh, one that uh, Walkera themselves um, made or changed. And um, actually, uh, the quadcopter flies uh, great on that uh, firmware, no issues at all. However, it doesn't support air mode. So, yeah. Um, and if you want to utilize the other new features of Betaflight, yeah, you can't. So, uh, yeah, you might want to upgrade the firmware to uh, a newer or the latest Betaflight version. Now, again, it is not really necessary. The quad flies great on the stock firmware. However, yeah, like I said, if you want air mode, and I do, you want to upgrade the firmware. And in this video, I will uh, step by step show you how that is done. So, um, let's get started right away. The first step uh, you might want to take is uh, not really necessary, but it's, uh, I, I find it handy to do. I uh, connect the quad up to uh, clean flight, so uh, I connect it uh, with a USB cable uh, to my computer, uh, start uh, clean flight and connect and then I run a couple of screen prints, prints uh, of the current settings. Uh, again, not really necessary, but it uh, can be handy to look back to your previous settings if you mess things up. So that's the first uh, thing I did. After that, it's uh, very recommended to uh, remove the propellers from your quadcopter, uh, a safety uh, step. So uh, please do that. As you can see, I do still have my propellers on because I have already flashed the new beta flight onto the quadcopter myself. But again, please remove your props at this moment. Okay, with that all said and done, we are now ready to go and flash the new beta flight firmware onto our quadcopter. And in this video I'll be using uh, beta flight 3.1.5, which is the latest firmware at this moment. However, if you watch this video on a later date, uh, you might see that there are newer versions available. And I am pretty sure in saying that those newer firmwares will also work on the quadcopter. However, if you want to take it uh, really uh, safe, uh, you can opt to just use the firmware I am using in this video and that will obviously work out. Um, let's see. Yeah, you've got uh, your uh, quadcopter still connected with the USB connector uh, to your computer, which is uh, fine. Um, you want to close down CleanFlight, which you have used to back up screen print uh, the current settings. So close CleanFlight down and uh, start beta flight. And you do not want to uh, connect uh, the quadcopter in beta flight. Uh, you won't be able to, but uh, just don't uh, try that. We now first want to uh, flash that new firmware onto our quadcopter. And um, on the left of the screen you can uh, select uh, flash firmware, the third option I think. And uh, then uh, select these settings. The first one uh, you want to select is SP Racing F3. The first uh, drop down box. Please select this uh, firmware or um, a chip version, so to speak. Uh, if you, for instance, uh, select the SP Racing F3 Evo, you will brick your quadcopter. Well, brick. Uh, you'll be. Uh, you'll have to uh, bootload uh, another firmware after that. So that's very inconvenient. Please just select. SP Racing F3 and you're good to go. The next selection box is the version of that firmware and as you can see I have selected 3.1.5 and that's uh, at this moment uh, the latest uh, firmware. So we'll go and uh, select that. 
Uh, then you want to unselect the no reboot sequence and you will want to do a full chip erase. Uh, select manual baud rate and select a baud rate of uh, 25 6000 and you don't want to show unstable beta releases okay and at this moment uh, at this point you uh, want to click at the load firmware at the bottom right that'll download the that selected firmware onto your computer at which uh, the flash firmware button uh, to the left of it will uh, become enabled. And that's it, uh, you uh, now want to press that uh, flash firmware button and uh, it'll uh, take uh, uh, around uh, 20 seconds and uh, then your quadcopter is flashed with the new firmware. That was pretty easy, wasn't it? Yes. And um, no, basically uh, that's done and you can now uh, connect the quadcopter with the button on the top right, connect. And then you'll have a screen showing you this. Alrighty, there we go. We are now connected to Betaflight or rather Betaflight is connected to your quadcopter. And the fact that uh, Betaflight actually connects to the quadcopter now uh, confirms that our flash was successful. Again, with the old firmware, Betaflight uh, didn't uh, want to connect to the quadcopter. So again, uh, with Betaflight now connecting to our quadcopter, confirms that the flashing was successful. However, we will uh, check it uh, anyway. At the bottom left, uh, you select a CLI, the CLI window. And in that window you type in a version and hit enter. And then you'll see uh, if all went well. Uh, Betaflight slash SP Racing at 3, 3.1.5 or whichever version you chose to use. Uh, which was released at uh, February 7th, 2017. Yay, great. Your quadcopter now has a more uh, modern firmware. Yay, cool stuff. Okie dokie. So, and if we move back to the first screen, the setup screen. Um, in the middle of the screen you see that uh, animation of the quadcopter. If you now move your quadcopter around, you'll see that it doesn't respond correctly. Um, don't worry though, we will fix that in a few seconds. Speaking of which, we will now to move to the configuration tab on the third option on the left. Now, let's see, what do we have to change in this screen? Um, first you want to confirm that the ESC motor features, uh, the ESC protocol is set to one shot, 125. It's probably already set to that. Uh, but uh, check it anyway. Um, I uh, deselected motor uh, stop, stop. So um, for me, the motors always spin if the quadcopter is armed. And yeah, I think that's uh, common for most uh, people these days. So, so please uh, unselect that checkbox. Then I've set the minimum throttle to 1040 and I've set the maximum throttle to 1900 and uh, let's see to the left at the board and sensor alignment you will enter 180 to the yaw degrees and that will actually fix that, uh, that quadcopter not Responding the, the correct way. Okay, uh, moving on down. Yeah, uh, the receiver is already set to PPM uh, input. And that's actually correct, so we'll leave that as it is. Moving on down again. You want uh, to set the gyro update frequency to 2.67. 
and the pitch loop frequency to the same value, 2.67. Um, leave everything else in that block of features as it is. And uh, let's see, moving on down, moving on down. Um, maybe the telemetry is uh, selected, uh, deselected. And the um, transponder is probably selected. You'll have to deselect that as well. Well, just uh, only select a black box in this uh, screen or in this part of the screen, and then you're good to go. Um, let's see, yeah, that's everything for this screen. So uh, hit save and reboot at the bottom right. And uh, at uh, that point, your port, port will uh, reboot. Okie dokie, so we are back at our start screen again. We are connected still and at this point what you want to do is uh, calibrate the ESCs. Now I've seen several videos on uh, flashing this quadcopter to newer firmwares in which uh, they didn't tell you to uh, recalibrate your ESCs. I found that it's definitely necessary to do so. So, we will, and this is actually why we removed the propellers in the first place. <laughs> so, um, we move to the motors tab on the left. Now, uh, we uh, select uh, that uh, we understand that <laughs> what we are doing on the right. Then we move the master slider to full power. And as you'll see, uh, it'll move all four motors to 1900, which is uh, the, um, the maximum output level of your uh, transmitter, uh, as, uh, as you probably know, uh, at least with the stock settings. And uh, I'm going with the stock settings uh, here. Okay, so move the master uh, slider to full power. Uh, at this point, you want to connect the LiPo to the quadcopter and then you'll hear each motor uh, make uh, two beeps. Uh, not uh, at the same time, uh, you'll uh, hear every one single motor do two beeps and this will take around uh, two to three seconds. When that's done, uh, you move the master slider uh, quickly to zero and uh, after that uh, each motor will uh, make confirming beeps again. And uh, that's it, basically uh, then you've uh, got your ESCs uh, calibrated. Uh, you can check that by uh, slowly moving the master slider up. You can do that with your arrow keys. Uh, slowly move them up and you'll see that uh, all motors at some point around 1025 to 1030 you'll see all motors spinning without a jittery. Okay cool stuff we've got our ESCs calibrated we are actually well on our way of having a fully functional quadcopter again and um, if you run this quadcopter with the Devo 7 transmitter that comes with the ready to fly version you um, might know, and maybe you don't know, it doesn't really matter, uh, that the output levels of that transmitter don't run from 1000 to 2000, which would be ideal for uh, quadcopters like this. And because the output levels uh, aren't running from 1000 to 2000, you want to enter some uh, CLI commands. Again, I'm running uh, or I'm going with uh, a completely stock setting, so I'm not going to change the settings in the transmitter. And um, again, you want to go to the CLI window, uh, bottom left, and you want to enter these four commands that I've uh, entered. The RX range uh, commands. And uh, let's see, it's just the uh, RX range space uh, 0, 11, 10. 1912 etc. So those four lines and you'll see that the second one, the RX range 1, is uh, reversed. It's uh, the, I've got the two values reversed because that channel is reversed. And uh, that's it. You uh, enter, uh, type in those four lines, hit enter after every one line. 
And that is it. Um, you don't really have to uh, enter save. You can, but uh, well, n not really uh, necessary. If you do enter save and hit enter, your uh, quadcopter will reboot again. But again, it's uh, not really necessary. Okay, um, basically you are all said and done now, uh, but we'll have a look at the, the modes I am using for this quadcopter. Let's have a look at that. Oh, wait a minute, Mr. Dutch RC, you are moving too quickly. I, <laughs> I've uh, forgotten to uh, show you the PID settings and that's uh, definitely uh, needed. Um, I've uh, done some tuning and I've actually uh, taken uh, most of the settings uh, in this screen uh, from uh, a website, a German website. Um, let's see. So you move to the PID tuning uh, tab on the left. And I'm not going to run you through all the settings I've done in this screen. Uh, you can uh, obviously just pause the screen at this moment and uh, copy the settings I'm using here. And let's see. Yeah, they are a bit personal. Well, the PID tune, uh, not really. But uh, maybe you'd uh, want to uh, change the gains if you want a faster response. That's personal. But uh, this will definitely be a good starting point for your quadcopter. It'll be uh, quite locked in, so to speak. Okie dokie. Well. PD tune done, and again the last thing I want to show you is the modes I am using for this quadcopter. And uh, as you uh, see, <coughs> I arm my quadcopter uh, on a switch, uh, one of the three position switches, uh, AUX2 actually, as you can see. And I also use that AUX2 for my beeper. Um, this might be a little uh, different from what uh, most people do. Um, if I toggle my arming switch, which again is a free position switch, I first move past the beeper. And that's uh, just an audible confirmation for me that I actually am using the right switch. So yeah, personal thing, but uh, on that uh, free position switch uh, the, the middle position is the beeper and the last position is uh, having the quadcopter actually armed. And with this new firmware we can uh, finally use air mode, yay! And uh, as you see I also have a horizon mode uh, enabled and uh, well to be honest I hardly ever use it. I do use angle mode for, uh, for landings. Sometimes for takeoffs, if I do a hand launch, that's uh, definitely uh, more convenient than uh, hand launching it uh, in uh, acro mode, definitely. But uh, so yeah, the angle mode and uh, acro mode are uh, the modes I uh, generally use. And I, uh, in acro mode I obviously have air mode enabled. I don't have air mode on a separate switch, as you can see. So, uh, well, uh, this is uh, uh, just uh, an insight in the modes I use. Maybe you can uh, take something out of that. And with that, we are all said and done. Uh, you've got uh, a, a quadcopter with a more a recent firmware and most uh, importantly, air mode. Yes, sir. So, um, I hope this video helped you out, uh, gave you a, a good uh, understanding of uh, all the steps needed to uh, get a more recent firmware onto your Rodeo 110. If however you are left with questions anyway, uh, don't hesitate to uh, hit me up a comment uh, down below. Uh, ask me anything you want and I'll help you out with that. Uh, for now, thank you very much for watching and hope to catch you on the next video. Bye bye.